Everyone thought he was a weak orphan in a new world with E-rank skills, but he takes revenge on everyone by destroying them. Mimo was a troubled kid who got abused in his own house by his mother's new boyfriend after his father's death. The poor kid got beaten up every day while getting barely anything to eat as he cowered in the corner covering himself, while his horrible mother watched the television, ignoring her shouts of pain. He ended up growing up to be a lonely kid who was weak and didn't have any confidence. He wakes up from a nightmare of getting beaten up by his stepfather, when he hears the bully of his class named Sho, messing with a nice girl named Aya. He takes away her book and waves it around the air, making fun of her for reading girly novels, because this negative ick imbecile can't understand that a girl will read girly novels. Nemo imagines how, in a TV show, he would stop the bullying and win everyone's admiration, but he knows that in reality, no one on the bus cares, and if he stands up for her, his weak frame will only get him beaten up. Most popular students support Sho, while the others laugh along to avoid being targeted. The teacher is useless, asleep as Sho relentlessly demands the girl's phone number. Before he realizes it, Mimo stands up, looking Sho in the eye, and tells him to leave Aya alone. Sho laughs, calling him a simp and weak, when suddenly Kiri, the most popular guy in class, tells Sho to give the book back. Sho obeys and returns the book to the girl, then moves on to bully another nerd, Yasu. Mimo questions why he stood up for Aya, an unusual act for him, but before he can dwell on it, Everyone on the bus is transported to a different world. They are all utterly bewildered as they stand in a completely unknown place while a hot god stands atop a bridge and introduces herself as the goddess Visay. She explains that every time when the threat of a demon king appears, the kingdom of Alien summons brave warriors from a different world to defend their kingdom. 200 years ago, the demon king almost demolished their entire kingdom. But thanks to some heroes, the Demon King was soundly defeated and the entire Demon Army was destroyed. Unfortunately, the Demon King has gotten resurrected, which is why they have all been teleported to this world, to fight as the new heroes who will put an end to the Demon King. The students are utterly confused as they wonder whether they are dead, or is it some kind of a prank? Their teacher tells them to stay quiet and instructs them to hear what the goddess has to say. Mimo looks at the old architecture, the soldiers wearing armor and holding spear, and the goddess with the golden eyes, before pinching himself to check if he is dreaming. Kiri ends up speaking and asks the goddess what will happen if they don't cooperate with her, to which the goddess smiles and claims that she won't be able to send them back to their world. Kiri asks whether there really is a way to go back, and Visai replies that there is a reverse summoning ritual which can send them back. But to get that, they will have to kill the Demon King, as they will require a special part called the Evil Element, which will only drop if he dies. Sho screams at her for calling them to a new world without giving them a choice, and refuses to help, but Visay goes down on one knee, and begs them to help save her kingdom from destruction. Aya speaks up and tells the goddess that they are just humans who can't really do anything, but Visay promises that they have abilities that they had no idea about. Sho still thinks that all of this is a joke, so Visai decides to prove it, and calls forth a prisoner of war and a giant demon dog. She lets the giant demon dog lose, and it immediately lunges at the prisoner before killing him. Some of the girls are horrified at this and fall to their knees, while Visai looks at the demon before chanting a spell and completely blasting the monster into flames, removing it from existence. She calls the students forward and tells them that they are going to measure their latent abilities. One by one all the students walk up to a crystal ball and check their abilities as it glows in different colors. After the nerds were through, Sho walks up to the crystal, and as soon as he puts his hand over the crystal, it starts glowing a bright red color. The goddess looks happy and claims that he has a rank skills. Finally Kiri goes ahead, but as soon as he puts his hand over the ball, it starts glowing a bright golden before exploding. After that Aya heads up, and even she turns out to be a rank and after some more students, another girl walks up who turns out to be S-rank. The guards are completely shocked, as Visai explains that even one S-rank individual is considered extremely lucky, but to have three S-ranked people is unreal. Finally Mimi walks up to the Krista, but when he puts his hand over the ball, it starts glowing a dim purple color. The goddess doesn't even give him a second thought and tells the next person to come up. Mimo tries to ask what rank he is, but she completely ignores him. So he walks away, realizing that even in this world, he is going to stay a background character. 
After that Yasu the nerd walks over to the crystal who turns out to have a special dark ability inside of him which another dark hero possessed a while ago and became the strongest. Finally everyone checks their stats as the goddess tells them that they also have a personal ability which varies from person to person, before telling them that they have to perform a critical ritual now. She calls Mimo in the front, and he is immediately pushed by a guard. She sends him below in a dark pit and claims that Mimo is E-ranked, which is the lowest in the entire class. Historically the E-ranked people have caused a lot of trouble, so they are usually killed, but since this time they got so many amazing heroes, she will give the E-ranker a chance to save his life, and he will be sent to the abandoned ruins, which is a dungeon far away where criminals and monsters are sent. She tells him that if he manages to survive, they will leave him alone and he will get the right to live, otherwise he can kiss his life goodbye. Mimo tries to argue, claiming that he can get better, but the goddess replies that he falls into the category of failure frame, which means that his stats are so low that even after training his ass off, he cannot get better. He gets pissed off and tells the goddess that he never chose to come here, he was summoned against his will and now is being disposed. But Kiri cuts him off and tells him that he is wasting everyone's time as the girls are already tired, while everyone agreed to him. Mimo falls to the ground, defeated, when Yasu walks up to him. Mimo remembers the time when he helped Yasu after he got bullied, but Yasu rejects him and tells him that an E-ranker should talk with more respect to their superiors. Mimo loses all hope as the goddess commences the ritual and throws a leather bag as his special item which is completely useless. Aya tries to defend Mimo by saying that this is wrong. Frustrated beyond belief, he raises his arm and uses the paralyzed spell at the goddess, who easily manages to block it, before calling Mimo a loser for even trying to hit her with his E-ranked skills. Kiri also tries his spell which creates a huge fireball, as he claims that he was just checking by letting a small amount of mana in the spell. Everyone laughs at the power difference between a loser like Mimo and themselves while Mimo simply puts his head down as tears fall down his cheeks. He remembers how his younger self used to cry, when suddenly his soul tells him to stop acting like a good person and show them the true nature of your heart, the nature that you have been trying to repress for so long. Mimo finally lets it all go as he looks up with hate-filled eyes and tells the goddess that she is a rotten hoe and warns him to be ready for him if he ever comes back alive. He immediately gets transported into a dark cave where he tries to open his status but fails because of the low light. He pours some mana into the leather bag and the gem starts glowing, which he uses as a lantern as he moves through the cave. Suddenly he realizes that he has been walking on skeletons which scares him. He wonders what could have killed all these people when a monster tries to attack him, which he barely dodges and starts running away. The monster starts chasing him while Mimo runs with all his might thinking whether he should turn around and fight, but his heart knows that the level difference is so great that he will simply die the moment he stops. He starts crying out of fear and gets knocked to the ground because of a rock jutting out of the floor. He turns around to see his death in its face, while frustration over his life takes command of his body. Just as the monster was about to kill him, Mimo ends up trying a last-ditch effort to save his life and shoots the paralyzed spell, which to his surprise actually petrifies the monster in place. He immediately gets up and starts running away, but soon he reaches the end of the cave where another bird demon walks up to him, with the raw intent of killing him. Mimo immediately raises his arm once again and uses the paralyzed spell which again freezes the enemy. He realizes that it wasn't a fluke and his spell actually works, but he starts feeling tired, so he opens his stats and notices that his mana was almost completely gone. He realizes that he has another skill left, so he tries to cast a poison spell on the monster, which works very well as the demon starts turning black and bleeding from its body. Nemo sits down on the cave floor wondering why his spells are being so effective against these demons when suddenly he hears something behind him. He turns around to see that the minotaur demon has managed to break off the spell and is ready to land the killing blow on Mimo. But this time, instead of running away, all the hatred for everyone who treated him badly comes back to him. And even after being completely depleted, he raises his arms towards the demon, determined that from now on he will kill to live his life, and challenges the demon to fight him, not knowing whether he will survive this time or not. His body quickly goes into a flight or fight mode, where he starts thinking about any way to escape this situation, while he gets completely surrounded by multiple monsters waiting to devour him. 
He wonders what will happen if he tries to use skills even though he doesn't have any mana as in the games he played. When a person did that, they ended up dying. He decides that he doesn't have any options as if he doesn't try. He is definitely getting killed. So he turns towards one of the monsters and uses his paralyzed spell on it. The spell doesn't work, and the monster starts attacking him relentlessly, while he tries to dodge and back off. He realizes that using the same spell twice on a monster won't be very useful, when suddenly he notices that he has unlocked a new spell called Sleep. Just when the monster was about to flatten him into dirt, Mimo ends up using the Sleep spell on it, and to his surprise, the monster stops in its tracks and falls over to the ground, motionless. He immediately uses his poison spell on the beast as well, so that it doesn't come back to attack him later. But using these skills without having any mana is taking a toll on his health. Before he could even make a plan, he notices that a huge horde of monsters is running towards him at full speed, while he wonders whether he has enough health to deal with all these monsters or not. He uses his magical bag as a flashbang, which blinds the monsters, after which he starts using his paralyzed spell on all of them, stopping them immediately. He stands there wondering whether he should use poison spell on all of them as well, but realizes he doesn't have enough health for that. Suddenly to his horror, a bunch of other monsters emerge from the depths of the dungeons completely overwhelming his senses, but he decides that he won't die without a fight and starts using his paralyze ability on any monster that would come near him. Soon his body starts feeling heavy as he feels dizzy, but he manages to stand his ground, but just when everything seemed lost, he ends up leveling up. Immediately his mana gets replenished and his status gets an upgrade which helps him fire off even more paralyzed spells on the enemy, saving himself for the time being. He realizes that he got leveled up because the bird monster died thanks to his poison spell. This gives him an idea as he starts paralyzing all of them, determined to gain as many levels as possible, while he fights for his life. He realizes that he has gotten a new skill, which lets him target a whole group at once, so he paralyzes them all together. As he wonders why his spell didn't work on the goddess because ever since he came to this dungeon, the success rate has been 100%. He then casually walks past all of the enemies, while using his poison spell on them. He levels up once again when the monsters start dying, so he sits down on a rock, smiling as he realizes that he has created a real-life XP farm from Minecraft with which he can gain a lot of levels. He checks his status and is stunned to see that he is already level 250 and his mana point is insanely high as well. Another monster dies and he again gains multiple levels at once. He then uses his sleep spell on all of them to level up the spell as well, and again when the monster died he got a bunch of levels, to the point where he became level 500 within a matter of minutes. He decides that with these many levels, he can definitely make it out of here alive, but decides to keep his guard up as there are a lot of monsters alive still. He stands up and looks at the remaining monsters, when suddenly they turn around and start running away from him. He scavenges whatever pieces of equipment he can acquire from the dead body of adventurers lying around and manages to find himself a cloak and some other small items. He starts walking deeper into the cave with even more monsters, but realizes that he hasn't eaten in a while and is extremely hungry. He has no idea where he can find food, but then he remembers the monsters that he has already killed. He returns back to the scene of massacre, and finds a monster on which the poison spell has worn off. He then takes out his sword and tries to hack a piece of meat from it, only to realize that the skin is too hard. Discouraged, he wonders whether even after killing every monster, he will end up dying of hunger. Suddenly he notices the gem on the bag glowing a weird purple, so he gets up to inspect it. To his surprise, he opens it to find some jerky and a bottle of coke inside. This brings tears to his eyes as he hungrily drinks the liquid, almost choking on it. He starts munching on the jerky in peace wondering how this bag works, and whether he will get more food from it or not. Two days pass by since he arrived at the dungeon, and soon enough he became strong enough that he could defeat huge hordes of deadly monsters easily, while simply sitting down on a rock and spamming spells on them, thanks to his near-infinite mana pool. He looks around himself at the scene of massacre, and wonders sadly what he did so wrong in life that he is being treated this way. He remembers how when he was young, he used to dream of killing his mother's boyfriend, knowing that if he didn't kill the man, one day the man would definitely kill him. Thankfully for him, his life took a turn when his aunt and uncle saved him from his miserable life and started taking care of him. It was then he decided to become a good human being who was always kind to others, but he snaps back to reality, 
looking around the mayhem he has caused while he feels no sadness at their death. He realizes that he was always a monster and decides to accept it, as he gets leveled up again to level 950. After that he wanders even deeper into the dungeon where he finds a floating eye monster which he kills immediately with his paralyzed poison combo and moves ahead. He finds a room where two adventurers seem to have died, so he checks their belongings and finds a bag full of gems which he takes and moves on. He finds a giant room which he opens it to find another skeleton inside. He finds the wound from which the man died and finds a parchment of paper with some words on it. He reads it to find out that the skeleton belongs to the dark hero, Visi was talking about. The dark hero writes that he was sent here by the evil goddess Visse when she had no use for him, and tells anyone who finds this letter to never trust the goddess. He angrily folds the parchment in his hands, realizing the demon king is not the only evil person in this world as he himself and the goddess both are equally evil. Inside the hero's bag, he finds a giant magical book filled with dark magic techniques on making items and spells. He checks the scroll beside it, but is unable to read it so he puts it in his bag before taking the dead hero's clothes. He suddenly notices a splatter of blood on one of the pages which said that the Soul Eater killed everyone. Mimo thanks the dead hero and walks outside through the galleries till he finds a giant door. He realizes that he needs to fit something for the door to open so he checks his stats only to see that he is level 1200 now. He wonders whether he is strong enough to kill the Soul Eater, which is present in the next hallway. He tries to enter it, but immediately gets attacked by a beam which graces his hand, forcing him to bandage it. He wonders how can he defeat such an entity which even defeated the Dark Hero, which means that this Soul Eater is definitely the final boss and the key to escape this place. Suddenly the Soul Eater starts moving forward and pukes out a bunch of goop, which turns into half-dead humans that start walking towards Mimo. He paralyzes them, but is unable to use poison as they still look human, while the Soul Eater breaks through the wall and starts screaming. Mimo is left in mental agony as he tries to move back, but the monster pukes some more half-dead humans that push Mimo in a corner as he starts crying for someone to save him. This all seems to amuse the Soul Eater who starts laughing at Mimo's agony, but THS is what he was waiting for. As soon as the monster dropped its guard, Mimo used Paralyze spell on it, and the Soul Eater drops to the floor, with a look of surprise. Mimo laughs at the monster, claiming that he finessed the demon with his acting skills, as that was the only way for him to drop his defenses. He tells the monster that all his life he pretended to be a good human who was kind to others and would never hurt anyone but now his true self is coming out. He doesn't care how many half-dead humans he pukes out, as it wouldn't matter to him. He is in a kill or be killed world, so any moving thing with the intention to hurt him, regardless of whether it's a monster, a half-dead human, or an actual live human, he will kill them all the same without any regrets. The Soul Eater starts bleeding from its eye while Mimo simply walks up and uses sleep spell on everyone around him, to finish them once and for all. After a while the Soul Eater ends up dying and suddenly, a bunch of souls escape from its body and become ethereal forms of humans who thank him for beating this monster, as they were trapped inside this demon with no way of escaping while it killed even more humans. Finally the Dark Hero emerged and he simply told him to deal with the evil goddess before disappearing. Mimo grabs the gem from the Soul Eater and walks towards the main gate. As he puts the gem in the door and it opens, he wonders what he will do with the bitch goddess once he gets her hands on her. Meanwhile, in the forests outside the royal capital, the rest of Mimo's classmates are hunting demons to level up. While Sho runs after a demon dog with a sword, Kiri burns down another monster with his powerful skill, successfully reaching level 18. In another location, the nerd Yasu whose personality has flipped 180 degrees burns some monsters with his dark flames and laughs on hearing its cries. Far away from them, a timid and pure girl named Koba hesitates to kill any monsters, but a bully girl called Asagi asks her to kill the monsters, or she will lose her life because this is the first test given to them by the goddess. Asagi keeps Koba on a tight leash and tells her that soon, the class will fall apart and various factions will form because there are a lot of selfish people there. Asagi is a B-rank, and she plans to create her own fraction with the girls that rally after her. She knows that since Koba is only D-rank, she will not be accepted by Kiri's faction or the other powerful ones, and even Aya won't be able to take her in because she will die soon. Koba panics on hearing this, but Asagi tells her to not worry about useless details. 
She just wants Koba to be her cute little plaything. And for her sake, she has asked the girls of her faction to trap a monster which she can easily finish. Asagi asks Koba to kill the monster and pass the test given to them by Vic, or she will be disposed off like Mimo. Koba doesn't want to kill the pitiful monster, but Asagi eggs her on, practically forcing her to do it. Eventually, she kills the monster, but that act of violence leaves her devastated, and she recalls the time Mimo helped an injured stray kitten. She begins crying, thinking that she could not help Mimo. Meanwhile, Aya also returns to her senses, and the pain in her gut reminds her of how the goddess knocked her out before sending Mimo away. She immediately goes to confront goddess Vic, who puts on a third-rate acting show, saying that she was also deeply hurt to send Mimo to danger, but it is their kingdom's policy. She adds that the ritual to dispose off the weakest member of the group will continue, and in the time Aya was asleep, she has already sent the weaklings who couldn't kill a single demon away as well. Aya truly hates the goddess at this point and tells her that her way of doing things is wrong. Vic just laughs it off, saying that everyone is entitled to have different opinions, but it doesn't mean that she will try to accommodate them. Aya then suggests that as an S-rank hero, she will work really hard and cover for those who cannot perform well enough. In return, she wants Vic to not banish them. Vic accepts her idea and then asks Aya to shake hands with her so that they can bury the past and start their relationship with a fresh perspective. Far away from them, in the dark forests bordering the abandoned ruins, a woman is running away from a group of nasty bandits that are pursuing her. However, she is too careless and leaves easy clues for the group of bandits, who plan to let her run as much as she want, because they will eventually corner her and hunt her down. At the same time, Mimo has just come out of the ruins, he looks at his stats before going out, and finds that his mana is over 59,000. However, he is more interested in finding out the details of his skills right now. He finds that he can use the paralyzed skill on particular body parts of his target in addition to their whole body. He can also weaken his poison skill to make it non-lethal. He plans to test it out as soon as he runs into some demons, but as he keeps walking, he hears some squeaking sounds coming from behind the trees. He finds that a bunch of slimes are bullying a smaller slime, and Mimo feels pity for the little guy. However, the little slime has more guts than the average bullied kid and it fights back against its bullies. Mimo decides that it is the correct time to test his new skills, so he paralyzes all the slimes, and then uses the non-lethal poison on the bully slimes. He then dispels the poison and paralyzed skills from the bully slimes, and makes them run away. He then turns to the small slime and tells him that he did good in fighting off the bullies. Mimo tells the slime that he is going to release it from the paralyzed skill and asks it not to attack him. He releases the paralyzed skill and goes on his way, but the slime starts following him instead. Mimo thinks that the slime is also an outcast like him, so he decides to adopt it. He puts the slime in his hood so that it can keep watch behind his back and alert him in case of any danger. Meanwhile, Mimo reads the book on forbidden arts by the dark hero. There is a recipe about a medicine that can strengthen even slimes. Mimo talks to the little slime, informing him that he is on a journey for vengeance against those who wronged him. He asks the slime if he still wants to follow him, and he affirms. Mimo is glad to hear that, and he names the slime Pigimaru, and the slime likes his new name. Mimo keeps walking ahead with that, when suddenly, he is surrounded by the bandits after the mysterious woman. The bandits were trying to make her run out of stamina, but on the way, they picked another presence so they came here for some fun. The leader of the bandits asks Mimo to hand over everything of value he has, and then they may spare him. Mimo is terrified now, because the bandits look terrifying, and he has not fought any human before. The bandits get into an argument about hurrying to catch the girl as opposed to wasting time with random nobodies, and Mimo tries to sneak away using this chance. However, the leader of the bandits tells him to stop immediately. Mimo begs him to let him live, but this makes the bandit even more intent about killing him. He rushes towards him, but it turns out Mimo was just acting to be scared. He uses his paralyzed skill to immediately stop the bandit leader's movement, and then he takes his time to berate the bandits, calling them scum because even though they are much weaker than the demons of the ruin, their evil intentions are even more intense than them. Even Piggy is furious at the bandits, and Mimo says that killing such people won't weigh on his conscience, and he would rather be happy that he eased the burden on Earth significantly. He casts Poison Spell on all the bandits, and once they all die, Mimo notices another presence nearby. The presence belongs to the mystery girl, 
who has used a special technique belonging to her tribe to summon a spiritual armor to protect herself. She can also feel Mimo's presence and tell that someone really powerful is nearby, but the vibe they give off is quite uncertain. The girl doesn't want to leave things to chance, so she swings her sword around, cutting through a bush where Piggy was hiding. Just then, Mimo arrives behind her and paralyzes her. She stutters as she asks what does he want, and he says that he just wants information because he is new to this area and knows nothing about it. The girl asks him about the four bandits, and Mimo asks if they are her comrades. She refuses, and he believes that she is telling the truth because she is not oozing out evil intent like them. He removes the paralyzed skill just from her head so that she can talk freely, and warns her not to try anything funny or he will kill her. Mimo comes in front of the girl and clearly tells her that because of a lot of reasons, he doesn't trust anyone, much less strangers he is meeting for the first time. Before he can start questioning her, the girl asks him what happened to the four bandits. Mimo tells her that he killed all of them, and the girl can't believe it, because the bunch of thugs was apparently known for being really strong. She asks Mimo if he fought the four of them alone or if he received help, but he refuses to give her any details. The girl believes that Mimo is not a bad guy, so she decides to trust him and says that she will answer any question he asks honestly. Mimo also starts trusting her a bit more because of her cooperative attitude, but it is not enough to free her. They begin talking, and Mimo learns that right now, he is not in the Alien Kingdom, but in the forest of the Urza Kingdom to the south. He learns a lot of things, and then finally asks the girl if she can read the Forbidden Spell Scroll. She can only tell him that it is written in a rather special type of ancient script which almost no one can read. However, she knows someone who can. She tells Mimo about a person called the Forbidden Witch, who was banished from her homeland because she was deemed too dangerous because of her excessive knowledge. The girl tells Mimo that if he wants to meet the witch, he should go to the Golden Demon Zone, which is a dangerous area in the middle of the continent. Mimo thanks the girl for all the valuable info, and she thanks him in return because he saved her from the bandits. Mimo says that the information makes it even, and the girl wishes him the best of luck. He thinks that she is too honest and innocent for her own good, which reminds him of his aunt. Anyway, he decides to take his leave after telling the girl that the paralysis spell will come undone in a few minutes, and then she can go on her way. Piggy also hops behind Mimo and then climbs on his shoulder. They talk about how it is unlikely that the girl may attack them once she is freed from the paralyzed spell, but Mimo still wants his slime partner to watch his back just in case, and he is eager to help in any way he can. Mimo soon reaches a small town called Mills, and the female knight on guard duty is rather nosy about his business. She thinks that he is a country bumpkin from somewhere who came here to work as a mercenary and raid some ruins. However, she gives him the permission to go inside, because the lord of the town has given orders to let all mercenaries inside, especially those who plan to raid the ruins. Mimo thanks her as he heads inside, and thinks that the security is very lax here because they didn't even check his luggage or ask for an identification document, but that works out in his favor. He soon reaches an inn, where a grumpy old man receives him. He is not friendly to Mimo initially, but just as he shows him a silver coin, the man begins acting like his personal attendant. He asks for his name, and Mimo adopts the fake name Hattie to stay at the inn. At night, he takes a walk around the town to find that it is quite peaceful, even though there are a lot of outsiders and mercenaries here. He finds that they have all the shops one would expect from a town of this scale in an Ice Guy anime, and there is also an adventurer's guild. Once Mimo collects all the info he can before heading back to the inn and eats some food, he keeps pretending that the food is delicious even though it is not as per his taste. He keeps his keen ears pointed at the drunk men sitting on the table besides him so that he can gather some information about this world. The drunk men are talking about the strongest knight orders in the continent. One of them talks about the holy knights under the mad Emperor Falcon who have never lost a war. Other men name other popular knight orders, and they believe that the magic knights of their Urza kingdom are not inferior to them in any way. However, all the men unanimously believe that the strongest knight order in the continent is the Black Dragon Knights, who burnt down the Holy Kingdom of Nia in record time. They begin fanboying over the strength of the Black Dragon Knights, who also have the strongest hero killer in the world among them. Mimo has heard enough so he takes his leave and takes along some food to feed his pet slime piggy. While the slime is eating rice, Mimo begins formulating a plan for future. He thinks that first, he should find the person who can read the forbidden magic spell for him. 
He recalls that the girl in the forest told him to meet the Forbidden Witch in the Golden Demon Zone. Before that, he plans to use a strengthening agent to increase Piggy's strength. Suddenly, he recalls that the drunk men were also talking about a newly found layer of ruins in their territory, which has attracted mercenaries from all over the place and the town is thriving. Mimo thinks that he can find the Skeleton King's bones in the ruins, which are the most important part in creating the strengthening agent. So the next morning, he joins the rest of the mercenaries who plan to raid the ruins. They are greeted by Marquis Creed, who is the lord of this region. Creed tells everyone about a new lair that has been found in the mill's ruins, and declares a reward of 300 gold coins for anyone who discovers the ultimate treasure of the ruins called the Cup of the Dragon's Eye. He promises to buy all the loot from the dungeon at a high price and tells the mercenaries that they can keep the drops from monsters to themselves. The registration process starts with that, and Mimo's attention goes to a douchebag noble called Flash trying to hit on a girl who has covered herself with a hood. She asks him what he wants, and Flash remarks that her voice sounds like a certain leader of the Holy Knight Army of the ruined kingdom of Nia. His words create a wave of gossips among other mercenaries who wonder if the Knight Princess of Nia is really here, because she has a huge bounty on her head. The douchebag keeps flirting with the woman aggressively, telling her that even her jugs are the same size as the elf princess who once refused his offer to have dinner with him. The woman tells him that he has got the wrong person, so he asks her to remove her hood and prove that she is a human and not an elf. He is confident that once he takes off her hood, her pointy ears will reveal that she is an elf, and since he already recalls the face of the elf princess, he will be able to claim the bounty on her head. However, when he removes the hood, the girl has normal human-shaped ears, and Flash is taken aback. Mimo recognizes the girl as the same one he met in the forest, but he doesn't interfere in her matters because she sends the douchebag running away in humiliation by herself. After that, Mimo heads to the store to buy some equipment, but he crosses the hooded girl who recognizes him. She approaches him and begins talking about the raid. Mimo warns her to be careful about how she deals with douchebags because the man from earlier may come to hurt her out of spite. She replies that she doesn't care, and explains that she deliberately acts rude to people so that they leave her alone. Mimo then asks the girl for her help in buying some tools for the ruin exploration, because he fears that he may get ripped off. He promises to pay her for her services, and the girl gladly takes the offer because she is in need of money. She shakes hands with Mimo, introducing herself as Mist, and he realizes that it is a fake name. He introduces himself as Hattie too, but explains that he also has some circumstances like her, which is why he is also using a fake name. Mist helps Mimo buy some good equipment, and he gives her three silver coins for her advice, which are more than she was expecting. She thanks him and starts leaving, but she suddenly collapses because of exhaustion. Mimo notices the dark circles under her eyes as he supports her, but Mist tells him that she just needs some rest and runs away. The next day, Mimo heads into the mill's ruins, and immediately finds some mercenaries running away from a demon calf that is the young version of the minotaurs Mimo fought in the previous ruins. He paralyzes and poisons the demon and then finishes it with his short sword. Meanwhile, the mercenaries call their senior to defeat the demon calf, and they are astonished to see that it has been defeated by someone using just one stab of a short sword. Unbothered by this, Mimo makes his way inside the ruins and finds that the demons here are not even a threat to him. On his way, he suddenly overhears the asshole named Flash asking two rugged mercenaries to help him kill Mist, because he can't bear to let anyone who humiliates him stay alive. He plans to torture her thoroughly before killing her, and then feed her to the demons. Mimo is disgusted by the way the filth of this world things, so he comes out of hiding to deal with them. Flash and his underlings get ready to finish him, and Mimo tries to test them by apologizing and saying that he will keep everything he heard a secret. Flash has no intention of letting him live, but just as he attacks, Mimo paralyzes him and his goons. He poisons them while they are paralyzed, and it feels oddly refreshing to get rid the world of filth like them. Mimo starts walking away, and Flash curses him, saying that he will get his revenge but Mimo was leaving them alive only because some powerful demons were heading their way anyway. The demons eat the paralyzed jerks, and Mimo heads deeper into the ruins without any weight on his consciousness. He decides to take a small nap before heading to the deeper floors, and Piggy keeps watch as he sleeps. Mimo then heads deeper into the ruins, leaving dead monsters in his wake. Because of this, he is cornered by an experienced adventure party called Saber-Toothed Tigers. 
Their leader Lily and vice leader Foe say that they couldn't even find the cause of the monster's death, so they suspect that some extremely powerful enemy is present here. That is why they are planning to return to the surface to ensure their safety, and they only stopped Mimo to ask if he would like to come with them. He thanks them for their concern and keeps going ahead. He thinks that if he kills more demons and leave them scattered, even more mercenaries will get out of the ruins and he will have better chances at getting what he wants. Eventually, he reaches the room where the dragon eye cup is placed. Mimo notices a dragon statue behind it, and he has seen enough anime to know that the thing is going to attack him if he takes the cup. So he paralyzes and poisons it in advance, and then takes the cup as the monster dies. Just as he turns around, he finds Miss there, who is surprised to see that someone reached the room before her. She says that sleeping for a couple of hours costed her the grand prize, but to her surprise, Mimo has no problem handing over the cup to her. Mist is flabbergasted and asks what should she pay for it, but Mimo tells her that she can keep it because the persona he is wearing right now is extremely naive and susceptible, especially when pretty girls are involved. Mist can't take something worth 300 gold coins for free because it hurts her honor, but Mimo keeps telling her that he doesn't need the cup or money. He begins fiddling with the platform and opens a secret passage leading deeper into the dungeon. He tells the girl that what he wants is deep inside the next floor, and he used the recruitment offer just to get here. Mist suddenly offers to be his bodyguard to the next floor as a way to pay him for the cup. She is insistent that she will be helpful to him, and after thinking for a while Mimo agrees to take her along. He lays out two conditions. Firstly, she will not poke her nose into his personal circumstances, and second, he cannot guarantee that they will come out of the ruins soon. Mist immediately agrees and swears to protect him even with her life. They soon run into a creepy plant monster with golden eyes, and Mist makes quick work of it with her sword skills. Mimo applauds her, and then asks her about the golden-eyed demons. She replies that the golden-eyed demons are said to have a lot of experience points, and they help heroes from the other world level up quickly. She also adds that the otherworldly heroes can't get experience from killing humans, and thus they need to keep killing demons to level up. Mist also explains that it is said that a special magic element released by the Demon King is what turns normal creatures and demons into golden-eyed variants, making them more powerful and ferocious. This makes Mimo thinks about Kiri, the golden hero, and he gets an eerie feeling that his power may somehow be connected to all this. Soon, they come to a resting zone, and Mist says that she feels the presence of a monster nearby. Mimo realizes that it must be Piggy, so he brings the slime out and introduces it to Mist. They immediately become friends, and then Mimo asks her to take a nap because she badly needs it. She reluctantly agrees and lays on the bed, when suddenly, Piggy starts dancing in front of her. Mist is distracted, and using that chance, Mimo puts her to sleep with his skills. To his surprise, Mist suddenly glows and returns to her normal form, which is that of an elf. Mimo always had a hunch, but now he is certain that Mist is actually Siraz, the princess knight of the holy kingdom of Nia. Far away from them, in the forest where Mimo killed the four bandits pursuing Mist, the leader of the Black Dragon Knights is looking at the scene of carnage. He believes that Mist defeated the four powerful bandits herself, and he thinks that he will have fun fighting her the next time they meet. The next day as Mist wakes up, her transformation skill automatically activates, making her look like a normal human. She panics thinking that Mimo might have seen her, but feels relieved when she sees him sleeping on the floor. Piggy comes up to her and starts squeaking, and Mimo takes this as a cue to stop pretending to be asleep. They start their journey into the dungeon after that, and upon sensing the entire floor rumble and shake, they decide to run away. Suddenly, a giant monster breaks through the wall next to them, and Mist recognizes it as the Skeleton King. Mimo can tell that it is the boss monster of this dungeon because it is much stronger than any demon they faced. However, Mist knows that the odd-looking bone under its chin is its weak point, and if they just break it, they will win. Mist believes that normal mercenaries stand no chance against the Skeleton King, but together, they might believe it. The Skeleton King seems to consider Mist a greater threat than Mimo, and he has no problem with that. Mist suddenly starts activating her power, telling Mimo that she needs to use it to defeat the boss monster, but she also needs to keep it a secret from the world. She asks him to keep her secret as a special armor appears on her body. The Skeleton King begins charging an energy blast, and Mist tells Mimo that in case she can't beat it, he should immediately run away. However, he takes action before her by paralyzing the boss monster with his skill. 
Mist is confused, but as Mimo casts the poison spell on the demon, she suddenly realizes that he is the man she met in the forest. Soon, the Skeleton King dies because of the poison, and then Mimo gets the bones that are needed to create the strengthening potion. He takes one look at Mist and realizes that her mind is full of question, so he promises to answer her questions once they get to the surface. They start walking back, when suddenly, Piggy alerts Mimo about something inside the Skeleton King's body. Mimo begins searching for it and finds a small bundle inside the demon's chest cavity. As soon as he takes the bundle in his hand, it starts to glow, and a strange symbol appears on it. On opening the bundle, Mimo finds a strange egg, but Piggy seems to be insistent about wanting it, so he decides to carry it with him. Far away from them, Mimo's classmates have also entered their first dungeon. Some students run away as skeleton knights begin chasing them, while a girl sits on the floor and cries over her severed arm. Her friend tries helping her, but they get attacked by the monsters. Everyone escapes somehow, and Aya stands in front of the monsters, determined to stop them. However, before she can do anything, Sho and Kiri attack the monsters and defeat them in one go. But Kiri uses his attack without concern for his classmates and Aya has to shield them. Kiri is proud of his strength and reveals that he is level 24 now. Back in the dungeon city, Mimo and Mist reach the surface, where Mist presents the dragon eye cup to the guards. As everyone's attention is drawn to the ultimate treasure of the dungeon, Mimo silently takes his leave. Mist follows him and informs him that she will get her reward from the Lord tomorrow in a public ceremony. Mimo asks if she is free till then, and on getting a positive answer, he asks Mist to come to his room at night so that they can talk about some things. She understands, and then grabs his hand just as he is leaving to thank him for the cup again. At night, Mimo is creating the strengthening agent, when Mist shows up on his door. Mimo tells her that he wants to hire her as his escort for the rest of his journey. He says that with the reward money from the cup she is well set, but he still wants to hire her. He is just trying to make her feel indebted to him by mentioning the cup, even though he doesn't like this tactic. Mimo then shows her a map, telling her that he wants to reach the Golden Demon Zone at the center of the continent to meet the Forbidden Witch. He claims that since there are many powerful monsters there, he needs someone skilled to fight by his side, and Mist is the only one he can trust. Mist seems uncertain about going to the dangerous area, and Mimo tells her that she can take her time to think about it. He then suddenly calls her by her real name, Ceres, and she responds out of habit. Only after that does she realize that she got played. Mimo apologizes to her about it, but reveals that he used his skill to put her to sleep in the dungeon, so he knows her secret. He claims that he needs her as a precious asset, which is why he won't sell her out. He knew that the thing that bothered her the most about traveling with him was her secret, but now it is out in the open. Mist also stops hiding her secrets and says that she can hide her real form with the help of spirits, but they need her to sleep to replenish their power, and she returns to her original self in that time. She reveals her original form to Mimo, saying that she trusts him now. In response, he also tells her his real name, so that they are even. She agrees to join him as his escort, and Mimo gives her one of the blue crystals he found in the first dungeon as her payment. Mist freaks out on seeing it, because the crystal is actually a rare item called Blue Dragon Stone, that is not circulated in the market anymore. Just this piece is worth more than the reward she got from turning in the cup to the Lord. She refuses to take something so precious and returns it to Mimo, who thinks that she is too good-natured for her own good. He takes the stone from her and then tosses it back to her, saying that it belongs to her now, and she can just throw it if she doesn't want it. She reluctantly accepts it, and then tries telling Mimo about her backstory and the people who are still on hunt for her. However, he claims that he is not interested in her past, because as her employer, the only thing he cares about is her abilities. The next day, as they have breakfast together, the people in the inn begin saying nasty things about them. Mimo tells Miss to ignore them, and then asks what she knows about forbidden spells. She tells him that it was Goddess Visai who banned some ancient spells, and classified them as forbidden spells. Mimo thinks that if the Goddess banned them, the spells might be dangerous for her. He thanks Mist for the info, and she blushes because it is the first time he has thanked her openly. After that, Mist leaves to get her rewards, while Mimo goes to the forest to enhance Piggy with the strengthening medicine. On Mist's end, she finds herself out of place at a party full of nobles and rich men. It is getting too late, and she has not yet received her reward. Just then, the Lord calls out a famous magician who can break illusions as a show for his guests. 
Mist is worried that she might be caught, and seeing that she is late, Mimo also begins suspecting foul play. Back to his classmates, Aya visits Goddess Visai to inquire about treatment for the girl who lost her hand. Visay says that she healed the girl only because she was a B-rank hero. She then asks Aya if she is not joining Kiri's group, and tries to manipulate her into thinking that it is selfish of her to not partner with another S-rank hero. Despite being attacked by such manipulation techniques, Aya stays firm and says that she cannot work with Kiri at the moment. She swears to fulfill her duties as an S-rank hero herself. And on hearing this, Visay says that she will let all the students who could not pass the first trial with her so that she can train them. Aya panics and reminds the goddess that they made a deal that those students will be left unbothered if she fights on their behalf. But the goddess says that she got an order from the king so she has no choice. She tells Aya that if she doesn't take the losers with her, they will be disposed of, and Aya has no other choice but to accept Visay's order now. On Mimo's side, he thinks that either Mist has betrayed them and ran away after receiving the prize money, or something has happened to her. The first option seems unlikely, so he decides to meet her, and on the way, he hears people talking that the girl who got the cup turned out to be the wanted elf princess. They say that she ran into the forest after her secret was discovered, but it won't save her, because the Black Dragon Knights are on her trail. Just then, three dragons appear in the sky and head towards the forest where Mist is trying to run away. One of the Dragon Knights attacks her, and Mist first tries uses her spirit magic to bring it down with an aerial slash. She enchants her sword to defeat the second and the third Dragon Knight too. She is tired by fighting them despite them being low-ranking knights. Just then, a spear comes towards her, and she blocks it. A dragon is charging towards her, but Mist realizes that it is a decoy, and the real enemy is in front of her. So she rushes ahead and clashes swords with a high-ranking knight named Gizun, who tells her that she is going to die here. Mist can't use her spirit armor to fight at full strength because of the illusion-breaking spell earlier, and Gizun keeps pushing her back as he reveals that he got orders from a certain person to kill her on sight rather than capturing her alive. However, he plans to have some fun with her before killing her. He keeps pushing Mist back, and when she loses balance and falls, he kicks away her sword before pouncing on her. Luckily, Mimo arrives there just in time and paralyzes Gizun and his dragon. Mist gets out of her situation and asks him what is he doing here, while Mimo puts non-lethal poison on the knight. He puts Gizun to sleep before talking with Mist, and reminds her that they can't talk about private stuff when others are present. He tells her that he came back to pick her up, but she tells him that she cannot accept his job offer now, because he will also be pursued by the dragon knights if he is with her. She tries to return the blue dragon stone to him as well, but he gets irritated by that and throws a pouch full of dragon stones back at her. Mist is perplexed on receiving it, and Mimo tells her that he cannot find a better escort than her, and neither can he be bothered with trying. He then abruptly asks her to undress, and Mist wonders if she heard that right. Mimo looks at her annoyed that she isn't understanding what he wants and tells her that everyone recognized her because of her attire and she needs to change into something else to throw off the trail. He then tells her that he needs her to find the Witch of the Woods as he must know what these forbidden spells are and she might even help her hide her identity better. He then moves towards Gizun and removes the sleep spell before asking him who the hell sent him to kill Mist. Gizun looks up at him wondering when he would die, but Mimo promises him that if he reveals the truth, he will be spared and Mimo would remove the poison spell. Gizun decides to reveal the secret as he also wanted to see how the elf princess would react to this. But before he could say anything, Mimo senses danger and pulls Mist away as a huge sword smashes Gizun heads in. Mimi immediately turns around to see three dragon riders being led by a young man with silver hair and glaring red eyes who declares himself as the humanity's strongest troop, who is known as Civet. He descends down with all three of his companions as he introduces their unit as the five dragon riders. Gizun used to be a part of them as well, but he spoke too much, and that's why he had to die. One of them seems to be a bit more flamboyant than the others with his Karen-style haircut, while the other wants to cosplay as a pirate, and tells Civet that they should use her as a ball and toss her around on the field before killing her since. The king himself ordered her to be killed on sight. The flamboyant Karen tells the pirate to shut up as the king wants the corpse to look as beautiful as Mist looks in real life, while Mist is horrified at what these men are saying. She takes out her sword, claiming that she won't die so easily, 
but the guys don't take her seriously and Civet tells her that he would give her a chance to win a duel against him and if she wins, he will leave her alone. But his eyes immediately turns towards Mimo as right now he is more interested in this strange foreign man than the elf princess himself. Mimo realizes that his life is hanging by a thread right now, as he can feel the power that this man has which is a 100 times greater than the Soul Eater who gave him a run for his money. He still smirks for some reason and asks Civet whether they can have a chat. Civet asks his name, but Mimo gives out his fake name, which Civet immediately recognizes and gets even more interested. The pirate seems dumber than a rock and asks why is he so interested in the boy. But Civet replies that this boy is not trembling in front of the Dragon Riders and even wishes to have a conversation with the humanity's strongest man. Mimo realizes that he needs to play his cards right if he wants to survive this ordeal and asks Civet whether he simply wants to fight the strongest enemies he could find on Earth to satiate his battle hunger. Civet acknowledges the truth but claims that not many enemies can give him a good fight. But Mimo asks why doesn't he fight against the goddess Visay? Civet claims that the goddess is indeed strong, but their kingdoms have a peace treaty, but if it ever came to war, he would love to fight the heroes that she summoned from another world as they are supposed to be incredibly strong. Mimo smiles while Civet gets bored of Mist and tells her that he doesn't want to fight a weakling like her and asks her to simply drop the sword and accept her death. Mist refuses it obviously which annoys the white-haired knight. But Mimi decides to sweeten the deal, and tells him that if he wants to fight a strong foe who can actually go toe to toe with him, then Civet should choose him as his new opponent as he is a hero from another world. Everyone is shocked to hear this including Mist who had no idea about it. But Civet laughs, claiming that he knew something was different about him. He asks why the hell is a hero roaming around in the forests so far away from his kingdom, and Mimo decides to spill the truth as he knows Civet will know if he lies. He reveals to Civet that the goddess considered him to be of a different class to the other heroes, and that's why she separated him and sent him away. There was not a speck of lie in there, but as expected, Civet thought that Mimo must have been a very strong hero, and that's why he was allowed to go alone. He asks what does Mimo want from him, and Mimo replies that he wants to postpone their match for now. Civet laughs and asks what he will get in return and Mimo replies that he will train and become stronger than anyone even the goddess herself and then he would come back to meet Civet in an all-out deathmatch. Civet laughs like a sociopath at this and claims that he would love to see that one day and tells Mimo that he is free to go on his way and even the Dragon Riders will leave once they deal with the Elf Princess. Mimo's face changes and he tells Civet that he can't let them do anything to Mist as he needs her to help him get stronger. Civet laughs once again claiming that he will allow that as well, as he really wants to fight him soon. Karen tries to speak against this, but Civet tells him to shut up if he wants to stay alive, and soon they all take flight as Civet tells Mimo to get strong before his patience runs out. Mimo smiles and bids him farewell as he waits for them to come in the exact range he wanted them to be in, and immediately uses his paralyzed spell on them. Civet realizes that something is wrong, but it's too late as soon enough all the dragons and their riders fall to the ground one after another while Mimo laughs at them claiming that this is not some heroic tale where people honor their words. This is his gritty story of revenger against the world, and he doesn't care how he achieves it. Civet struggles on the ground angrily asking what the hell did he do. Mimo doesn't even care to reply and uses poison on all of them, killing them immediately. But Civet still keeps struggling even after hit by his poison spell, which reminds him of the Soul Eater who was the only other monster that managed to move a little while being poisoned. Civet is much stronger though as he picks up his lance to throw it at Mimo, but ends up falling down out of exhaustion. Suddenly an alarm is sent for backup and a huge horde of dragon riders arrive. Civet tries to bark orders at them, telling them to keep their distance and kill both Mimo and Mist. But the dragon riders are too shocked to see the strongest four including their leader Civet on the ground, dead or dying. Mimo tells Mist that she can run away while there's a chance but she tells him that she is his bodyguard and will stay by his side. Mimo smiles and immediately connects with Piggy thanks to his newly learned ability. Soon Piggy emerges from Mimo's back and sends a bunch of tentacles towards the flying dragon riders, increasing Mimo's range as he uses his paralyzed spell on them. Soon it starts raining dragons and humans as they fall all around him, but he decides that he is going to use these men as lab rats so he uses different spells on them to try them out. He uses Berserk spell on Karen who immediately gets mad and starts calling the manager, before using the darkness spell on the pirate, making him actually blind as he struggles to see what's going on. 
After he is done with everything, he simply leaves them to die, and paralyzes them once again for good measure. Suddenly he realizes that everyone's dead, but Sivit is still somehow surviving which truly shocks him. He walks up to him as he takes his final breath and collapses on the floor, finally dead. After that Mimo and Mist walk into the forest, knowing that at least no one will be following them, but Mist claims that there might still be the black dragon rider known as the hero killer who must be after her. Mimo suddenly remembers that he killed someone like that, which truly shocks Mist as she wonders how strong this man is. She pledges her loyalty to him and promises to stay by his side through any kind of troubles, while he promises to pay her back in kind. They finally start their journey together through the forests, not know what adventures lie ahead for them. Several days pass by when Mimo and Mist reach a new town which looks to be filled with life as the market erupts with talks, laughter and kids playing around at night, while Mimo looks around in different shops and gets interested by a weird mask on display. The shopkeeper tells him that the mask is the replica of the Fly King who was a demon king long ago and defended the land of the demons against a giant army and managed to save his race from extinction. But even after doing all this, some politicians banished him outside the country, claiming that he was the root of all evil and the Fly King was never seen again. Mimo ends up buying the mask and takes it back to his tent where he tries it on, thinking about how his story is similar to the Fly King, but unlike the Demon King, he will definitely take his revenge against the goddess. The next morning he leaves to explore the city with Mist who believes that their enemies would not expect them to be in the middle of the city, but Mimo is still very careful, checking to make sure they are not being followed. He suddenly notices a giant old building, and Mist informs him that this building is known as the Colosseum where slaves and mercenaries fight against each other and against animals in hopes to attain glory, gold or freedom. He realizes that this is basically the same as the Roman city in his world and asks who controls this region. Mist claims that the kingdom of Yuza manages this entire region and tells Mimo that nowadays the Colosseum has been turned into a freak fest, whereas during the early days, many nobles and soldiers fought against each other to show their strength and several times the best would be chosen to act as the commander of the entire army. Mimo is not interested in all this horse crap and tells the woman to follow him into a fancy little inn. She complains about how they should save money and advises him to only book a single room instead of two. Mimo turns around to check whether she is joking or not, but the girl is a total thought and claims that she doesn't have any problem with them sleeping together. Later that evening they head down to the tavern to grab something to eat and Mimo notices that the place looks unusually filled with people. He silently listens to all the conversation when some men start gossiping about how the Black Dragon Knights are all dead after they went to find the Elven Princess and start making fun of her by saying that she must be hidden in a kitchen making a sandwich. Mimo agrees with these misogynistic jokes and keeps listening when someone claims that the group of mages who call themselves a Shinto claim to have killed all the Dragon Knights, while the other men believe that they might have killed Mist as well, not knowing that she was sitting right in front of them. Mist tells Mimo that Ashinto has been the talk of the town lately as they are some dark mages who seem to worship an evil cursed god. Just as she was telling him about them, the door opens and a bunch of hooded figures claiming to be the sorcerers of Ashinto enter the tavern. They walk through the crowd and shoo away some people from a table before sitting down and asking for booze. Mimo realizes that these idiots don't seem to be very scary or dangerous, but because the dragon knights ended up dying mysteriously in the eyes of the kingdom. They can claim that their curses worked. Suddenly Mimo overhears two men talking about the fact that the death of these dragon knights could be the work of the Forbidden Witch and one of them claims that someone has seen her nearby. Mimo immediately walks up to them and orders them a bunch of beer and food as he asks for information in return. The men are more than happy to oblige and tell him that the Forbidden Witch is supposed to be a dark elf who wasn't seen for the past ten years, but recently someone claims to have seen her fighting in the pits of Colosseum as a blood fighter. He asks where he can find this beast woman and the guys tell him that he would have to get through the Colosseum and for that he would need the permission of the duke. Suddenly the door opens and a cheetah woman enters the tavern and the guys immediately smile, claiming that Mimo is in luck as this is the beast woman they were talking about. Mimo immediately moves towards the beast girl and offers her a drink and some food. The cheetah introduces herself as Eve and immediately asks what he needs so he cuts to the chase and asks whether she has seen the Forbidden Witch. Eve ends up disappointing him as she claims that that is just a rumor started by someone. It is true that she once entered the Golden Forest where the witch supposedly lives, but she never actually met her. 
She asks why does he want to know about the witch and Mimo lies about being a scholar who wants to produce a biopic about her. But Eve simply warns him not to go near the forest as he won't survive single day inside. With that, Eve leaves the tavern and soon Mimo and Mist also depart while she confidently tells him that the beast bitch was lying. Mimo also thought the same and decides to investigate this matter further tomorrow. They return back to their inn for the night where Mimo realizes that he forgot to feed his slime and gets scared of a lawsuit by Peta. They soon start munching down on some old cheese sandwiches that he had in his magic bag, which Mist really likes. Mimo wonders how can they extract more information from Eve and Mist replies that the only thing that blood fighters care about is money, because with that they can earn freedom from their masters, but to do that, they would need a huge amount of money. Mimo decides to find out more about Eve the net morning, while Mist decides to burn of some calories to maintain her hourglass shape and gets in her armor, which leaves all her vitals in the open. She starts practicing her swordsmanship. As Mimo watches her in admiration, realizing that this woman can make a sandwich and cut it with her sword which is a bonus. He gets impressed by her and asks whether she could teach him some basic moves and she agrees. She tells him to go all out and attack him. But Mimo wonders whether a weak woman can handle his manpower. Mist tells him not to worry as she was the instructors for the holy knights before so Mimo swings at her full force. But she dodges out of the way and locks both his arms behind him. Mimo immediately folds so Mist lets him go by the time they are both covered in sweat. Mist realizes that women should wash the clothes so she immediately heads down to clean their clothes but starts creepily sniffing Mimo's cloak while he comes from behind. She immediately hides what she was doing, while telling Mimo that she is used to washing clothes. A little while later, Mist heads off to sleep, while Mimo sits down reading his dark magic book. But just like my dyslexic ass, he can't understand anything. He realizes that Mist has been doing her hardest to make sure she isn't a dead weight and he decides to thank her the next morning. Before he could head out to sleep though, Mist ends up waking while Mimo tells her that he just couldn't sleep. Mist immediately takes out her herb bag and produces three herbs that have different effects on a person. She claims that the first herb can make you sleepy and relaxed, while the second one can make you energized. Mimo wonders whether it actually works but decides to try it out anyway. So he takes out a couple of cups and puts some soup cubes in it before pouring in hot water. After that Mist takes out a vial and starts pouring the herb into the cup, but later realizes that she messed up and ended up pouring the energizing potion instead of the relaxing potion in the tea. Mimo realizes that this can be difficult considering they are in a single room with no one watching, but he reminds himself of his goal, which is to take revenge against the goddess Visi, which puts his mind back into the focus mode, while Mist bows down as she has finally found the king of all incels. The next morning they both head back to the city in order to gather more intel and Mist returns back with some juicy gossip. She tells Mimo that Eve was brought here as a slave three years ago and she showed her true potential in her first fight itself. Ever since that day she has stayed undefeated in the arena and tomorrow is going to be her last fight as a slave. Mimo looks troubled as this would mean that she already has enough money which puts bribing her out of question. Surprisingly enough Miss clams that there is more to the story as apparently Eve already earned enough money to buy her freedom two years ago, but she stayed behind because of a child slave, whose freedom she wants to buy as well. She also tells him that most of the strongest blood fighters have died in their last matches, and she suspects that the old duke doesn't like these fighters earning their freedom, so he rigs the fights against them and kills them in cold blood. Mimo wonders whether Eve has any idea that her last fight could take her life and all that she dreamed off while Eve sharpens her blade to get ready for the battle. Mist asks Mimo whether there are any chances for Eve to survive, but Mimo believes that the Duke would never let her live and will definitely try to kill her off with the introduction of a new fighter which will now become everyone's favorite. Mist is shocked at this and asks what will they do tomorrow, but Mimo replies that they don't have to wait till tomorrow as they are going to make their move today itself. Later that evening, Mimo ends up tracking Eve down into a dark alleyway and blocks her path. She seems confused at this and asks what does he want, since she already told him that she has never seen the witch. Mimo immediately tells her that he knows that's a lie, but Mist tries to claim that it isn't. Mist decides to chime in and claims that they know she is lying and Mimo asks her to cut the crap and come clean. Eve immediately takes a defensive position and grabs her sword, but Mimo tells her to chill out as they simply want to help her. Eve keeps her hand on the sword while Mimo tells her that the Duke is planning to have her killed in the match tomorrow, 
which would be really problematic for them since he wants to find the location of the witch. He straight up asks Eve whether they should kidnap the girl that she is hiding and take her out of this slave city tonight. Eve gets pissed at this and claims that she will cut their hands off if they dare lay a finger on the girl, but Nemo tells her to rest easy as they mean no harm. Miss chimes in claiming that they know she has been fighting these past two years only for the sake of the little girl Liz. Eve realizes that these guys really do know everything about her so she calms down a little, claiming that she can't turn away from the fight tomorrow and must participate. Mimo asks whether they should take Liz away to safety, but Eve replies that if they don't follow the rules of this city and try to run away, bounties would be put on their head and they will be pursued by soldiers and assassins for their entire life. She claims that she might have ran if she was alone, but since Liz would be with her, she can't take any chances. Mimo again claims that he can take her away to the safety of the Golden Zone where the witch lives as no one would dare enter that area, but Eve replies that even he won't be able to enter the zone itself as it's way too dangerous. Mimo however promises that no matter what happens, he will make sure to keep Liz as safe as possible. Eve considers this option and looks at Mist, immediately realizing that she has experience in martial arts and asks Mimo what is he capable of. Mimo tries to downsell him and claims that he can defeat the Skeleton King pretty easily. Eve smiles, claiming that a Skeleton King is a strong enemy, but nothing compared to what he would find in the Golden Zone. Mimo replies to that by revealing that he is the one who defeated the Black Dragon Knights. Eve doesn't take it seriously though and simply laughs at him, claiming that a weakling like him could never face even the weakest Dragon Knight. But Mimo immediately raises his arm, and before Eve could take her sword out, he uses his paralyze ability on him, completely freezing her body while she struggles to get free. He tells her to calm down as the more she tries the more HP she would lose. He claims that with this ridiculous ability, he managed to defeat the hero of humanity all on his own. Mist walks up as well and removes her cloak before revealing that she is the elf princess who the dragon knights were chasing and claims that she saw the battle with her own eyes. With that, Mimo reveals Eve from the paralysis spell as she finally believes his abilities, but replies that even after all this, she wouldn't be taking their help and going the legal route of winning her final match tomorrow and freeing Liz from slavery as she trusts in her own strangit more than she can trust someone she just met. Mimo looks at her and asks whether she thinks the Duke would let her go this easily, since he has heard that the Duke is a pretty big thorn in the ass character, but Eve claims that despite the Duke being unethical, she still believes that he is just as human and can't be as ruthless as to turn against his own words, so she would trust in her skills to defeat the opponent tomorrow and start a new life. He decides to leave and tells Eve that if she changes her mind, they would be waiting by the front gates of the city till the crack of dawn. After that they return back into the city when they suddenly spot a huge crowd gathered around the dark mages who claim that the man of this house trash talked their god so they delivered judgment and slit his throat. They ignore them and proceed on their way. By the time night starts falling, they suddenly hear the voices of these dark mages harassing a poor girl for absolutely no reason. They try to get her involved with their cult, but she refuses which gets her a bitch slap across the face. Mist gets pissed and tries to get her sword out, but Mimo stops her and instead uses his berserk spell on one of them. That man starts going crazy, hitting and biting anyone near him, which gives the girl some time to escape after which Mimo uses Berserk spell on the others who all start fighting while he leaves the scene alongside Mist. A little after midnight, both Mimo and Mist set out again towards the front gate, while Mist asks whether he truly believes Eve would seek their help. Mimo replies that he knows for sure that the Duke is a total bastard, and if Eve decides to go the legal route, she will get royally boned. The same thing has been confusing Eve the entire night as she struggles to sleep thinking about tomorrow and whether the Duke would keep his word. She decides to put her mind at ease by directly asking the Duke whether their deal about freeing Liz was still on. But before she could enter the room she overhears a soldier talking to the Duke about tomorrow's battle. He asks him whether there are any changes in the plan, but Duke replies that there will be no changes and Eve would die tomorrow. This truly shocks her as the Duke talks about how he is going to give her a poison which would numb her senses. The soldier laughs while the Duke claims that he was forced to spend a lot of money into the shrine that's being built for her since she was very well loved by the audience, but he considers her as a subhuman creature who shouldn't even be alive. Eve can't believe her own ears, while the soldiers asks what will happen to the little girl, and Duke Dipshit replies that he will raise her as a perfect wife otherwise simply pimp her out for a lot of money. 
They all start laughing while Eve clenches her teeth before returning back to her cell as she finally comes to a decision. She gets a cloak and walks towards the main gate where she finds Mimo and Mist both waiting. Mimo is surprised to find her so early, but she replies that the Duke indeed is a filthy animal who can't be trusted, so she will take Mimo's offer and run away. Mimo claims that he wants some things in return and Eve agrees, claiming that she will reveal the location of the witch and even enter the Golden Demon Zone with them. That settles the deal and Mimo gets ready to kidnap the little girl. Meanwhile on the other end of the city, the dark elf works in a tavern, cleaning up the tables, while the fat owner comes out of the kitchen screaming at her to move her hands faster. The poor girl tries her best to work quicker, but the fatty has less than one brain cell, so she starts hitting Liz for absolutely no reason till the little girl falls to the floor while she laughs at her. Liz tries to hold back tears and stay strong as she remembers how strong Eve is and takes comfort in that. The fatty for no reason starts screaming in her ears, when suddenly the door slams open, flinging the fat ugly bitch on the ground. Eve enters furious at the fatty for treating Liz like that and takes her sword out, but the fatty immediately falls to the floor begging for her life, claiming that she never wanted to treat the girl badly. But the duke ordered her to discipline the girl harshly, and if she didn't do that, he would have punished her. She tells the fatty that she is going to leave with Liz and tells fatty that if she wants to live, she will tell everyone that Liz got kidnapped by someone, and Eve went after them. The fatty cries and agrees to these demands before telling Liz that she never wanted to treat her badly, but was forced to. Suddenly Nemo enters the tavern wearing his mask, and tells Eve to go ahead as he just wants to check on something. Once they leave, he walks up to the ugly fat orc and tells her that she might trick Eve with her acting, but he can see right through her ugly acting. He tells her that he has been through abuse and knows what it feels like so he can't let her go this easily. The woman tries to call his bluff, claiming that she is the only one who can save them from the wrath of the duke once he gets to know about this, but Mimo is done with her crap and immediately uses Paralyze followed by the poison spell which somehow manages to turn her even uglier as she starts dying slowly. Mimo takes out a knife and starts setting up the scene to make it look like a robbery before leaving the tavern and escaping through the sewer. They start making their way through the underground routes while Liz introduces herself, begging Mimo to let her accompany them as well as she wants to stay with Eve. Mimo looks at her, claiming that their path is going to be very dangerous but Eve confidently replies that she will be fine as long as she can stay with Eve so Mimo agrees. He soon takes out the slime from his back and introduces them to it before making their way out of the sewers. Soon they enter the forests and start moving through it when Eve walks up to Mimo and claims that she trusts him completely and is ready to put her life on the line for him. Mimo asks where this sudden trust came from and she replies that Mimo could have used other means to get information out of her and could have even tried to threaten her by kidnapping Liz on his own, but he decided to come clean with her about his motives. She then asks why exactly does he want to meet with the witch, and he replies that he has an ancient text that he believes the witch can decipher. Eve asks whether he intends to harm the witch, but Mimo refuses, claiming that as long as the witch doesn't attack them, he doesn't have any intentions to hurt her. Soon enough they start moving on horseback where Mimo tells Mist that Eve definitely has some connection with the witch and he has also heard that the witch is a dark elf just like Liz, which can come in handy as she can vouch for them. Suddenly he notices a bunch of light coming from the kingdom and realizes that someone has raised an alarm already. Eve believes that someone must have seen her and claims that she will hold them back while the rest run away, but Mimo refuses, claiming that they will take their stand together. He first distracts half the forces by making them chase after some horses, while they hide between the bushes for a surprise attack. He tells Eve to fall back with Liz as for this particular plan, he needs mist in the front. With everything set up, he finally picks his mask and puts it on, ready for the last stand against the forces of the Duke. The leader of the Ashinto Dark Mages group immediately recognizes that they are heading towards a trap and stops, claiming that the enemies must be hiding inside the jungle. He senses Mist hiding behind a tree and calls her out, claiming that he can see through their tricks. Mist reveals herself wearing the mask of the Fly King, which seems to amuse the dumb leader, who laughs at her, while his cronies point their arrows straight towards her. He tells her to hand over the leopard girl, as well as the dark elf, if they want to stay safe and promises that he won't take their lives if Mist follows his orders. In fact he offers to let her join the Ashinto group since she looks like a skilled warrior. Mist asks what will he do if she refuses his offer, and the leader immediately starts telling her about how his group of dark mages, 
managed to bring down the Dragon Knights alongside the strongest knight that humanity had to offer. He claims that one curse was enough to drop them on their ass, after which they were little more than insects which he crushed easily. Mist obviously knows that this is a lie since Mimo is the one who killed the Dragon Knights with his clever strategies, but decides to play along with the story as the entire Ashinto group seems to share a single brain cell amongst themselves. She sheathes her blade and asks the leader to promise that he won't harm Eve or the Dark Elf, and the douche agrees, promising not to harm anyone. She instructs him to follow her as she starts moving towards the forest, but the leader senses that something is off and tells his cronies to stop. He laughs at Mist, asking whether she really had any intentions of handing over the girls. He claims that it would be stupid to ask a huge platoon to follow her inside the forest, since it is much easier to simply bring the girls out. He asks whether she was trying to bring them into the range of some sort of spell. Mist realizes that his assessment is spot on, as the leader immediately tells the mages to maintain their distance and prepare for battle. Mist maintains her cool and asks whether they are going to kill her with their special idiotic curse that doesn't exist but the leader smiles, as the group takes aim at Mist with their bows and arrows. The leader claims that everyone inside their group is a fallen member from the Assassin's Guild, which was crushed by the heroes because they called it unconstitutional, but some of the members survived so they still have the knowledge of all the terrible poisons that can kill a human with just a drop. Mist replies that poison is a woman's weapon, but the leader calls her sexist as gender is just a social construct, and he identifies as a helicopter. This idiot also ends up revealing that they didn't kill the Dragon Knights, but found them dead on the ground with no clues left behind. So just like Osama, they decided to take the credit. Anyone who tried to call out their lie was killed by a strong poison which left no trace so people started believing that there might actually be a curse for real. Mist asks why the hell are they doing all this, and the leader simply replies that they were tired of their 9 to 5 job and wanted something fun to do so they decided to topple the government and take over the entire country. Since they have the knowledge of assassination, they can kill anyone they want and simply claim that they cursed the person, which makes people believe that the god is on their side. He then asks where the hell are the rest of her team since he finds it hard to believe that a weak ass woman who belongs in the kitchen would try to face them alone. Mist claims that her ass is pretty strong, and the reason why she is facing them alone is because she is the lost elven princess who the Dragon Knights were hunting. This is clearly news for the leader who is taken by surprise and asks whether she is the one who killed the Dragon Knights. This was a good opportunity to scare the Dark Mages by taking credit, but she has the brain cells of a bowling ball and fumbles the reply. The leader immediately claims that a woman with room temperature ache can't defeat the Dragon Knights and he doesn't believe that she can be stronger than the Dragon Knights anyways. He calls forth a baldy, claiming that he was the opponent Eve was supposed to face tomorrow and his brother is also in their team with his crossbow aimed at her. To her surprise, he also reveals that their other brother named Fang was the one who was hunting after her in the forest but mysteriously died, and because of that the baldy wants revenge. Mist doesn't know how to deal with this situation, while the leader of the mages ends up surrounding her with his cronies, ordering her to surrender if she wants to live. Mist falls to her knees while hoping that Mimo will find a way out through this somehow, and he doesn't fail to do that. He throws a flashbang at the enemies before using the slime as an extension of himself, while he sits down on the ultimate gaming setup and casts Paralyzed Spell on all of them. The Dark Mages are surprised at this while he walks out of the forest like a true baller and, and tells Mist that she doesn't need to worry about anything as he likes dummy thick bimbos. The leader can't believe this and tells Mimo that he sent a group into the forest to make sure there was no ambush, but Mimo claims that he already took care of all 15 of them. He then casts Gibber spell on them as well turning their face purple as they shit and puke on the floor. Mimo claims that he was the mastermind all along as he intentionally created a situation where they would think that the traps have been gibber in the forest, after which Mist will try to take them into the forest. This made the leader believe that he is smarter, and he ointment his gibber which was the reason he lost this bout as if he simply walked inside the forest. Mimo's plans would have failed. Soon the gibber a Shinto group dies at their feet, but the trouble isn't over yet since the other troops are also arriving towards them. He tells Mist to take Liz back into the forest and hide, while he and Eve will deal with the attackers. Soon enough the entire battalion arrives at the spot and rush at Eve to dispatch her quickly, but this only made them walk into the range of Mimo's curses as he casts a paralyzed spell on them, stopping them in their tracks. He casts a poison spell on them as well, 
while from the opposite direction the duke himself charges at them, swearing that he will display her fur on the wall and mount her head on a spike. Mimo tries to use his paralyzed spell, but unfortunately, he has reached his daily limit and for more he will have to subscribe to the premium plan. Duke's crony was about to hit him, but he immediately uses a darkness spell which basically makes him blind and gives Eve the chance to chops his head off with a single slash. He starts using his blindness spell on every single knight around the area while Eve hopped on everyone, killing them with her sword. This really scares the crap out of the rest and they start running away, but Mimo tells her not to let anyone escape. Eve immediately grabs a spear and throws it at a single enemy, sheesh kebabbing him which made her feel like a strong independent woman. Meanwhile Mimo walked around casting curses on the enemies as if he is distributing Halloween candy. One knight tries to attack him, but Mist shoots an arrow in his ass, saving Mimo's life. The duke starts getting desperate and kills his own soldier claiming that no one will run away. Meanwhile the bitch goes crazy and racking kills after kills till only the duke is left. The duke thinks that he is in a TV show and tells Mimo that one day they will fight again before turning to leave, but Mimo ain't about that life and uses the paralyzed spell to stop him in his tracks. Eve immediately finishes him off, after which Mimo goes ahead and starts freezing the bodies of the Ashinto group before breaking them into pieces so that they will never be found again, while everyone will think that it was the Ashinto group who killed the duke and his men before running away. After that they all head down to a cave to relax a little bit where Mimo gives Mist an ear job for no reason before putting her to sleep on his not-so-juicy thighs. The next morning he gets Liz some new drip, and they decide to continue their journey towards the demon zone. By the time the sun starts setting, they manage to reach the enchanted forest where Mimo notices a huge leafless tree in the middle. Eve replies that it is known as the corrupted tree which once used to have magical powers inside of it. She then proceeds to pull out map hacks, claiming that they are the green dot while they need to move towards the red dot. Later that night they all sit down by the campfire to rest for the night, while Mimo seems to be very restless as he paces around the cliff realizing that he still hates the goddess Visai, just as much as he hated her the first time that thick crazy woman sent her back to the dungeons. He knows that the demon zone is one of the most deadliest locations in the entire world, but that also means that he will be able to get a lot of experience from it. He might never become as strong as the S-ranked or the O-ranked heroes, but he can sure as hell close the strength gap in between them. With that he decides that the next morning he will continue his journey through the forest and keep killing anything and anyone he meets so he can farm XP as much and as quickly as possible so by the time he meets the goddess again, he is ready to slap her with all confidence and finish her off. The next morning they all get ready to venture into the depths of the deadly forest, but before heading in, they take some inspiration from the Chinese sweatshops and hand all their luggage to the dark elf kid. Mimo claims that this way they will have the best chances of survival, so they all take his word and head inside the forest. Once they start entering the grassland, both Mimo and Eve sense something and immediately a huge lizard demon appears as if it's Florida. Mimo realizes that he looks different than the normal lizard monsters, and suddenly the lizard demon opens an alien mouth showing his disgusting teeth. It immediately attacks Eve who quickly blocks the first two blows before blocking the tail butt, while Mimo tells uses this opportunity to close distance and uses his paralysis spell on it. The monster stops in its tracks immediately while he puts a poison curse on it which is very effective and the monster dies soon. This makes Mimo happy as now he knows his spells are working on the monsters here. He tells Eve that he thinks this was a particularly weak monster since the monsters he killed in the early dungeons were also stronger than this. That is a relief knowing that the level of enemies is not very high for now, so he moves towards the corpse and shanks it. Mist asks what the hell is he doing, but Mimo hands her a book and tells her to check out the image of a weird looking creature which looks similar to the thing attached on the lizard's face. He claims that this is a forbidden item so he wants to carry it to learn more about it and following that they get ready to move deeper in the forest. They soon reach a river and the only way through is jumping on the rocks. Mimo manages to somehow make his way to the other side with Eve's help, while Liz gets ready to follow them. Eve wants to take the bags away from her, but Mimo tells her to let Liz do this on her own to build some confidence. Eve is worried that Liz might fall and her fears become true when she actually ends up slipping while jumping, but thankfully, the slime immediately catches her, saving her from a pointless death. Afterwards, Mist starts hopping from stone to stone, but this useless woman ends up slipping and falls into the stream. 
After getting completely wet, she starts sneezing, so Mimo offers her his cloak, but this only makes her wetter. Eve tells them to get a room, but suddenly stops as her kitty senses start tingling. She tells Liz to back off and call Mimo in front, claiming that she sensed a very strong monster and doesn't think that she can take it on by herself. Mimo immediately walks ahead and tells Eve to back off and act as a bait while he lays his trap. He immediately hides behind a tree, while these huge but stupid bug monsters start breaking down all the trees to reach near their prey. They end up coming into Mimo's range, though as he emerges from behind the tree and uses Paralyze spell on both of them. The monsters immediately stop, while Mimo feels proud that he managed to stop the monsters that even the strongest gladiator couldn't. He walks up to them confidently and uses the Berserk spell on both of them, causing them to bleed and die a horrible death. Mimo calmly walks up to the dead monsters and shanks them as well, while Eve asks whether he is planning to eat them, but Miss tells her not to overuse her tiny brain as the monster is listed under the forbidden items in the Dark Arts book. According to her, this item is used to strengthen a slime to a huge level, and Mimo tells her that she is absolutely right. They get ready to move on when they suddenly feel a mysterious presence very close to them, but for some reason, they are unable to figure out where the hell is it coming from. Suddenly the slime starts acting weird and tries to get out of the bag, so Mimo take the bag off and opens it, only to find a mysterious egg in his bag. The egg starts glowing and hatches to reveal a weirdly blue horse who starts running around like a crazy hoe. Mimo doesn't know what to make of it, and even Mist claims that she doesn't know any horse demons who look like this. The horse tries to come near Mimo and starts cuddling with him. Since Mimo can't sense any hostility from the pony, he decides to keep it and see what happens. Suddenly Mist discovers a weird tumor-like thing on the horse's back and wonder what it does. Mimo realizes that this tumor-like thing is actually a mana crystal connected to the horse, so he starts transferring his mana into the horse without even asking for consent while the horse screams and moves, but Mimo holds it still and soon realizes that the horse is getting stronger. Suddenly it starts glowing as a purple aura emerges from it, and soon it transforms like a Pokemon into a giant black stallion. Mimo is impressed by this wonders whether he could have it carry their luggage as well, but the horse seems to want to go for round two. Mimo tells it to calm down as he is still in the post-nut clarity stage, but soon enough he starts transferring more mana into the horse, which glows red and transforms once again into an ugly eight-legged black horse with giant horns. The ugly ass horse definitely looks cool, so Mimo decides to keep it for style points while it slathers its tongue all over mist. By the time night falls, they all manage to find a place to stay near an abandoned temple. And while the girls were back in the kitchen where they belong, Mimo was outside looking at the night sky. Soon Mist joins him claiming that they have made quick progress thanks to the horse, and Mimo agrees when he sees some weird light coming from the other end of the forest. He wonders what the hell is happening there when he suddenly realizes that the kingdom of Alien is that way and realizes that the goddess must have sent the other heroes into the forest. His guess is spot on as his shitty classmates are also in the forest fighting against the weird bug monsters, and even though all of them have grown stronger, Kiri has reached a point where he easily demolishes an entire horde of these monsters with a single attack, claiming that he is going to be the future king of this country. Back in the temple, the next morning, Eve wakes up only to find Mimo missing. Mist realizes that even the slime is gone, but Eve claims that she doesn't think Mimo would simply abandon them in the middle of the demon zone. They soon walk outside and surprisingly enough, find Mimo sitting in front of a giant demon corpse shanking it left and right. Eve is shocked to see that Mimo defeated such a strong monster all alone, but Mimo replies that the demon arrived when they were sleeping, and he didn't want to disturb them. Soon they all pack their gear and Mimo decides to head out once again and try to cover ground before the storm comes. They all start walking again and Mimo asks Liz whether she is scared of this forest. The elf girl replies that she was scared before. But Miss told her that as long as Mimo is with them, they will definitely make it out in one piece without any trouble. Mimo realizes that these people trust him a bit too much and wonder whether he will be able to save them if a really strong monster arrives. His thoughts are broken though when they find a hole in the wall which can act as a shortcut and substantially reduce their time to find the witch's home. Eve starts talking about how she is going to find a small house and make it her own after which she is going to spend her entire life peacefully living with Liz and having fun. They all felt happy seeing that their dangerous journey is nearing end, when suddenly a huge monster appears right behind Eve. Mist and Mimo both try to save her, but they are too far away to strike. 
Thankfully Eve is a strong and independent feminist who takes out her sword and slashes he monster in half. She backs off immediately asking Mimo whether he knows anything about it. But Mimo has no idea what this thing is and immediately casts a paralyzed spell just to be safe. He wonders why is he feeling a little jumpy, even though the monster is dead, when suddenly a huge light erupts from the demon as it starts screaming like Jojo Siwa in her new music video forcing everyone to cover their ears just like I did after hearing her song. Mimo touches the ground and soon realizes that this was a trap as he can feel a huge horde of monsters approaching them from all direction, and he knows that they are way too many even for him to handle as he wonders whether they will ever survive this situation. Mimo quickly figures out that this can't be a coincidence and remembers that he once read about a special demon who is not very strong on its own, but when it dies, its scream attracts tons of other demons. He thinks that this big mouthed fuck might be one of them. What's done is done though, as a huge army of monsters are approaching their position and they have no way to fight against so many of them. He quickly starts racking his brain, trying to figure out a way to get out of this situation. But before he could properly decide what to do, Eve steps forward claiming that she will stay behind and act as a bait to the monsters, giving the others the chance to escape from this area and find the witch. Liz immediately tries to stop her, but Eve tells her that she is very good at maneuvering through terrain like this and she is very quick, so there is very good chances that she will survive through this ordeal while giving them a chance to escape as well. Liz looks down, unable to speak because of her emotions, but Mimo speaks up and delivers a cliché line about how Eve needs to promise them that she will return to them in one piece. Eve was about to promise, when Mimo tells her to stop being so cringe, as he would never say anything so mind-numbingly dumb as that. He claims that at the end of the day she is just a big pussy, and can't defeat the monsters no matter how hard she tries. He takes out his mask, telling her that this job calls for a man to deal with it in a manly way, which she can't do, no matter how many pronouns she changes. Eve was about to get triggered like a classic feminist, but Mimo tells her to shut her trap as they need her in order to negotiate with the witch since the witch trusts Eve and not them. He gets ready and tells them all to leave through the caves, claiming that he will stay here alongside the horsey and the slime as they have the highest chances of survival amongst them. Eve tries to argue, but he tells her to shut her dumbass up as he is the leader here and he is going to give the order sure. Eve finally agrees while Miss drops down to her knees. Mimo gets excited thinking he will finally receive that sloppy top, but Mist was simply thanking him for his generosity and bids him good luck. Disappointed, he tells them to get their ass out of here while he deals with these demons. Meanwhile, on the other side of the forest, the other heroes have no idea what the fuck just happened as everyone starts running like a mad hoe trying to escape the police. Kiri and the other guys try to slash down any monster that they could get their hands on. While the girls start running away to hide in their kitchens, Kiri realizes that something is not right, as he thought he is the main character of this story, but these monsters are ignoring him just like your crush ignores you. While this is happening, one of the girls get bitch slapped by a monster just like a Texan wife when her husband comes home drunk. She drops to the ground, wondering whether she will meet Mimo once she dies, but jokes on her as Mimo is getting ready to fuck shit up. He pours all his love juices into the horse, making it bigger and stronger, and after that, he grabs his mask and tells the slime to scream inside of it as loudly as possible. The mask acts as a microphone, letting out a huge sound wave that attracts all the monsters in the nearby area. With the girls safely hidden inside of the cave, he immediately takes off with his horse, moving as fast as possible while he gets chased by huge monsters. He wonders whether he will survive this assault, but realizes that he has the power of toxic masculinity which is super op. Back in the forest, Aya tries to help all the other students evacuate, but soon finds out that two of them have already died. She finds out that they both belong to the team of the class in Selyasu, who suddenly became all edgy after getting powers. She asks him what happened, but he straight up replies that they were weak which is why they died. She tells him that he is in a ranked hero, which means that it's his job to protect the weaker members of his team but he gets mad at her and grabs her collar, claiming that she has always been the class princess, so she can spout shit like this, but incels like Yasu were always looked down upon, and now he finally has the power to rise in the social hierarchy. Suddenly Kiri and his imbecile arrive at the scene telling Yasu to stop his yapping, as he is still an incel who is stuck at the bottom of the food chain, and he has just shown why he can never get a class no matter how much power he gets. 
Yasu gets triggered by this and starts yapping once again while showing off how edgy he is. Kiri's imbecile friend wonders whether they should beat him up, but Kiri tells him to let it go, and Yasu tells them to suck it as he leaves the area, claiming that every man is on their own. Back in the cave, Eve tells Mist that she is going after Mimo. Mist worries that Eve will schlob Mimo's knob, so she asks why the hell is she going out. Eve claims that she doesn't think Mimo can deal with so many demons alone. She claims that even though he is the strongest amongst them with the highest stats, he still has been barely sleeping ever since they came to this forest. Mist agrees since she knows that he has been roofing them while he stays awake and guards which means that he is in not the best condition himself right now. Eve claims that she wasn't bullshitting when she claimed that she can probably deal with the demons alone. She claims that she is very good at working alone in the darkness thanks to her pussy senses and good hearing. Mist finally agrees as even she is worried about Mimo, so Eve decides to leave Liz in her care while she goes out after Mimo to make sure he is okay. Back on the battlefield Mimo is raising hell as he uses the slime to cast Berserk spell on multiple enemies, which causes them to go crazy as they start fighting against each other. But soon the monsters under the spell die and the remaining start chasing after Mimo once again. This time he casts a paralyzing spell which knocks down a couple of monsters in the front. But he realizes that up till now, only the weaker bitch monsters have been dying, and the stronger ones are still behind him close by. It soon starts raining which becomes a huge problem since it reduces his visibility as well as his hearing senses. He quickly opens his status bar, only to realize that he is burning through mana very quickly and to regain some more mana he needs to kill the stronger monsters in the middle. He immediately turns around and starts running towards them, while the horse crunches any monster coming towards them beneath his hooves. He uses the slime's arm extension ability once again and casts the blindness spell this time. He goes crazy on them, spamming berserk, blindness as well as paralyzed spell on all of them, as he clears his way running towards the giant monster in the middle. He notices that his mana is decreasing very quickly and unless he manages to defeat the demon, his ass is grass. With the clock ticking, he somehow manages to enter the spell range and uses the berserk spell on them alongside the poison spell which turns out to be enough as the monster slowly and painfully dies with blood coming out its eyes. This was a blessing as it refills Mimo's mana to full again, and he starts going on a rampage once again casting berserk spell on every single monster in the area. He keeps running away as he realizes that two huge monsters are still chasing him. He quickly isolates them by casting a sleep spell on the other smaller demons, which leaves the two huge ones alone running after him, and he tricks them into following the horse, while he jumps behind them and uses the paralyzed spell alongside the berserk spell, killing them immediately. He receives a bunch of mana points once again and starts riding, but there seems to be an endless flow of monsters as another wave starts running straight at him. He decides to face them head on and starts casting all the spells in his arsenal. But this was not enough as some of the monsters survive and knock him off his high horse. He gets cornered from all side as the monsters start swarming him, but he keeps spamming his spells one after the other killing every single thing around the area and wondering whether this would be enough. Meanwhile, Eve was running through the forest, when she ends up running into one of the hero students named Kashima, who was sitting on the ground scared in front of a dead demon. Eve gets taken by surprise, and wonders what a human is doing here when suddenly another girl emerges from the woods and tries to land a lightning strike on her. Eve manages to block the attack, but Itsuki follows up with a second combo, which catches her off guard. Itsuki thinks that Eve is just another demon and tells her to get ready as she lunges at her with her sword drawn out ready to kill her, while Eve wonders whether she has enough strength to fight against these literal heroes. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe and check out this brand new anime about a human who hides and becomes the strongest leader of the demon army.